testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, dropping bombs like Ed Hawks. Put your finger in there and press it four times. Okay. Welcome. Here we are, back again. Voodoo Unicycles, Ed Hawks, Jason Ald. This is the Jason Ald interview. Jason Ault. I am 23 years old and I'm from Edinburgh in Scotland. I've been riding for nine years. It's a pretty long time. Yeah, it's been kind of nine years since I picked it up, but um, only kind of really started doing street and trials when I was about 17, 18, so maybe five years. I guess, it, yeah, I always say I've been riding for nine years, but if I want to sound like I'm actually better for how long I've been doing it, I say I've been doing it for five years. <laughs> <laughs> My main riding style, I would say I'm almost predominantly a street rider, um, and I try to stay true to that. You find a lot of street riders these days that uh, they do a lot of flatland or they do a lot of trials, but I, I try my very best to do just the one, which may be to my detriment perhaps. Um, more recently I've tried to evolve my trial skills. But I remember when Flatland started getting big originally and I was never into it, I never really enjoyed it. I always liked, uh, the element of, of street that I always enjoyed was the fact that you did tricks on obstacles, using obstacles um, in an urban environment, kind of negotiating uh, the stuff in the city, I guess kind of the mentality and the philosophy that the free runners have. So that's why I've always enjoyed about it. What are your influences? Uh, who do you find inspiration from? What made you the rider you are today? Dan Heaton, I would say, is my biggest inspiration. He's the whole reason I started street unicycling. As I said, when I first started, there was no such thing, so he was the first guy I kind of saw do it. I, I almost imitated his style, I guess. I don't want to say imitate or copy, but definitely influenced by. I'd say I'm influenced by Sean Johansson. I say that as it's a dirty word. Um, sorry, Sean, if you're, if you're watching. But no, I love Sean. I think he's a great guy. He's done so much for the sport. Um, people don't give him credit for it. Maybe because he could be more gracious. I don't know, I don't know. I like him, he's a great guy, and he's a fantastic rider. What about outside of the sport then? Outside of the sport, wow, how long have you got? Um, I'm influenced and inspired by so many different people um, within sports themselves. Uh, guys like Bruce Lee, um, who's a fantastic um, athlete, as well as a, a great philosopher as well. He, he, he kind of crossed that, that kind of Athenian, the Greek kind of great to be a thinker and great to be an athlete at the same time combine the two you should never be isolated just to one old school philosophy I'm really keen on so guys like that influence me all the time to, to try and break boundaries and, and try to, to become a better unicyclist and a better person at the same time because after all unicycling I guess is just an allegory for life itself isn't it and, um, you know the, the skills that we have in unicycling we use to transcend and to become better people I believe personally one big influence, Leonardo da Vinci, I would say, because he was what uh, the original Renaissance man, the man who was fantastic at everything, and um, I, I also aspire to be more talented like him too. Do you have to work at progression, or does it come naturally? Uh, definitely have to work at it. Uh, I don't think I'm naturally gifted at anything, to be honest. Um, yeah, like uh, I, everyone talks about nature and nurture, you know, uh, were you born with a, a specific ability? Jesus, I don't think I was born with any abilities at all. And everything I've got, I've, I've learned and I've, I've worked hard for. And then um, it's frustrating because you see people who don't work as hard as you and they get it, and then you work so hard and you don't get it. I mean, what's the point? I think that in itself is a lesson, though, it's a lesson in persistence and, and tenacity and, and to keep going and, and to understand that nothing in life comes easy. Um, no, no, I'm definitely not. I definitely have to work at, at, at progression. Yeah, 100%. What goes down if you have a bad day riding? Um, yeah, I think I, I read somewhere um, you can never, never be 100% every single day. And then um, even the best athletes in the world are the same, even the best artists in the world are the same. Um, so I think you have to accept that it comes and it goes. You don't, you're never at your best always. Uh, consistency is 
It's very difficult. See, uh, what is it? Form is temporary, class is permanent. And I always try to remember that. So if you if you ever have a bad day, just remember, you know, if you if you truly are good at what you do, then the next day you'll get back to it. So it is frustrating, and I do get annoyed. I wouldn't say I'm, I'm quick tempered, but yeah, it, it can affect your mood a little bit. But um, yeah, just try to get on with it, really. What motivates you to ride and to keep riding? What motivates me to ride? I feel like um, there's, a, there's a really good quote from Macbeth, Shakespeare's Macbeth, that said, he's, I don't want to bring the tone, I don't want to bring the mood down, but it's basically about how he's killed so many people and he's got so far in, he's like wading, like waist high into blood that, say, you know, to come out the other side would be just as, as much effort to go back. And um, as, as somber and as melancholy as that sounds, um, the idea is basically I've come so far, I've done so much, if anyone doesn't know, I do this full time and then um, started off doing nothing and, and now I've got something, you know. So I feel like I've come so far, I've, I've done so much over the past five years, uh, laid so many foundations that I'm here now and, um, you know, let's face it, I don't think there's anything else I could do. Uh, I know that I know so many people say that, but I really don't. I don't believe in fate and I don't believe in a calling or a destiny or anything like that, but I honestly don't think that... Um, there is anything else in the world I could do. This is uh, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is the way for me to, like I said before, it's all it's all an allegory. It's all a metaphor for for becoming a bigger person, a better person, enlightened spiritually, emotionally, physically. And this is how I do it. It's just an outlet, isn't it? It's an outlet for creativity. Maybe if I maybe if I'd started doing something else at 14 instead of being a cyclone, I'd be doing that. But it kind of it's kind of fate. It's not fate. I just said I don't believe in that. You know what I mean? You kind of fall into things and it, it, it goes along the way and then you kind of stuck with it. Um, I guess the best way to put it is uh, unicycling isn't what I do, it's it's who I am. It's so much part of me now that I don't know what to do without it. So, yeah, I guess I'm stuck. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah, it's, it's not a good state of affairs. I'm stuck here, basically. I've, I've basically got a mortgage on the house and I can't sell it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. What do you do when you're not riding? You got any other hobbies? Yes, what do I do when I'm not riding? I spend a lot of time in the gym, as you probably <laughs> noticed. You know, uh, yes, I have been working out before you ask. Um, yeah, I spend a lot of time in the gym. I used to be a gym instructor, so I used to play uh, rugby as well. So I, I, that's how I got involved in the gym, started in the gym. Really enjoy it. Again, it's just a, another outlet for creativity for me. I know that sounds foreign to some people, lifting weights is not creative at all. It's just another way for me to push myself, learn new things, to um, develop physically as a person. Uh, I've brushed on a little bit before. I enjoy. I study a little bit of philosophy. I uh, really enjoy that. Do some kind of. I do the late classes now and again. Yeah, and I, I do a little bit of kickboxing as well. Kind of moonlight as voodoo security as well, just in case. So we'll be all right if any of the audience kicks off. Yeah, exactly. I'll be take, I'll be kicking ass, taking names. No questions asked. Okay, we're getting to the end now. We've seen the crank flip, the max whip, and the front flip. Where do you think unicycling will be in 10 years' time? That's a great question, Ed. Oh, God. I've thought about this a lot, and I would love to play a part in it. I don't know whether I will or not. I'll, I'll strive to. Um, as a sport, I'm sure it'll progress. Everything does. BMX in, yeah, BMX in kind of uh, had its time where it slowed down a little bit skateboarding, everything, but it picks up again, it always does, it evolves, people push it harder, so um, yeah, it'll definitely get, the tricks will get bigger, the tricks will change, what people do will, will get better and bigger. Um, in terms of mainstream publicity, like, whether it gets uh, more attention, whether more people get involved in it, uh, it seems to me that since I started, a lot more people are involved in it, I don't know if you would agree. I think the whole point of, of starting Voodoo Unicycle, being part of Voodoo Unicycle, is, is to try and achieve that aim. It's not necessarily to, to push the sport as a whole uh, into the mainstream, but to make sure that mainstream people know who we are at least, know what we do. So uh, if we have it our way, people will at least know about the sport. Uh, I don't think, and I don't want to sound pessimistic here, you can jump on me, but um, I don't think it will ever be what the other sports are, the other urban sports are, but never say never. You know, there's no reason why it should be. Right, last question. It's not really a question. Any wise words? Um, no, I watched Leo's interview and you said any wise words and to be quite honest with you I think he, he, he said it beautifully when he said just ride, uh, do what you enjoy, do. I remember when I was first started riding and then um, I was so consumed by progressing and getting better and stressing out, stressing out when I saw 
kind of my contemporaries um, getting so much better than me, and uh, I wasn't enjoying it at all. And there was a stage when I, I just didn't want to do it anymore. Um, so I think don't take yourself too seriously is, a, is advice. I don't like giving advice, but uh, yeah, it's, it's advice that I would give. Um, enjoy yourself. Definitely find if it's not unicycling, then find something that you enjoy doing and that you feel uh, gives you some some kind of feeling of accomplishment and fulfillment. Uh, it makes you feel like you've got some progression in your life. Um, and try and be a nice person to people, I would say. It's, it's an un I think it's very underrated. Be generous, be kind, be patient. It's a virtue. You know, think about at the end of your life what, what's going to count and what's going to count is the time you had here. You're not here for a long time, we're here for a good time. So, yeah, just enjoy yourself.